What's going on everybody? Mike McIntyre here back from All Things Sports bringing you another brand new video. This is something I've done before but I'm super super into. We're going to review and unbox the brand new Hisense PX2 Pro and show you what this brand new Ultra 4K laser projector is all about. So let's get into it. All right, guys, before we begin, you know the drill. Please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, take care of those three things, and let's get into this brand new video. All right, guys, so I'm back with another review of an ultra short throw laser projector. Some people refer to them as laser TVs. Typically, a laser TV will be accompanied with a screen. I have my own screen thanks to Elite Screens. I did a review on the Hisense PX1 Pro last year at about this time. This is the next generation PX2 Pro. My critique with the PX1 was I found some of the motion a little bit off-putting depending on the settings and I, I tried fooling around with that and it was just something I think they needed to smooth out a little bit and I also stated that I think it lacked a little bit of brightness. It was down at 2200 lumens and I thought if they upped the brightness it would just provide a better contrast, a little bit more image quality and I thought that would be something that they can adjust in a new version. We now have the PX2 Pro. There's a few new features in the PX2 Pro that we're gonna get into. I'm gonna show you around the projector and show you around the interface, the Google TV interface, and I'll tell you about the PX2 Pro. First, the unboxing it comes in a rather large box, as you can see here. You unbox it. Inside, you'll find some documentation, a pair of white gloves, a wrench to adjust the feet once you get that placed on your stand or wherever you're going to put it, and a couple of other cables, including the power cable and all the ports on the back as well. There's a few HDMI ports supporting 4K at 120 frames per second. This new model also supports Netflix right out of the box thanks to the Google TV interface. Now obviously this can be easily achieved via an Apple TV or some sort of streaming platform, but it's nice to see that within the Google TV interface on this PX2 Pro, you do have all the apps that you'd want. Disney+, Plus, Netflix, pretty much anything that you can think of, it is built in to the interface on Google TV. This 4K projector does have a few upgrades based on last year's. Now we have Dolby Vision right out of the box, even with a firmware update that you got on the PX1. This one is now shipping with Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. It has 4K resolution thanks to the DLP chip. It has 2400 lumens, which is arguably the biggest change. There is still no 3D support, which is something I personally would like. It's not something I would use very often, if I'm honest, but there are a couple of films and movies that I do enjoy watching in 3D, so I think the projector should support it if ever they were to make a PX3 Pro. I still think you can go up in brightness, but that's me being picky because I think having more brightness will just allow you to tune the image and get a little bit more contrast and a better overall picture. But you'll see once we get into the actual picture settings that this one is far better than last year's model. So let's get into some of the picture settings as I think that is some of the most important parts of a projector. Again, I'm pairing this with an Elite Screens ultra short throw CLR, so that ceiling light rejecting screen. You can pair it with any kind of screen really. You don't even need a screen. You could put it just right up on the wall, but you're obviously gonna get the best performance from the projector if you use a dedicated screen. This screen is 123 inches. It has the fancy backlit kit that you could see on the video right here. You can change the colors and manipulate some of the settings on the screen itself to support you know all these cool little features that you see here. Overall, this the screen is what makes the projector really, really pop. This supports 4K, even 8K resolution. It has the LED light kit around it, as I said, and it just makes for a better viewing experience. So if you are interested in an ultra short throw projector, while you don't necessarily need a screen, I highly suggest that you factor that into your budget if you're interested in picking up an ultra short throw projector. The PX2 Pro supports any image from 90 inches all the way up to 130 inches. I'm running this at 123. I love the massive size. I love having that movie theater experience in your own home. I've stated before that I would love to take the basement and completely renovate it into a dedicated theater space. But at the moment, I'm just reviewing the projector alongside my screen. So that is a future project. Stay tuned for that. Let's get into the image settings. So. I stated this last year and I went straight to that setting because I think it does optimize the image performance. I went into the theater day picture profile. Now you can go into standard if you like. It's solid, but it's not the most accurate from right out of the box. And I think you're gonna find the best picture profile or the best picture settings in the theater profile with a couple of different settings. So 
I have my uh, brightness boosted up a little bit, my contrast boosted up. I did go in and play with all the different um, calibration settings and as well as some of the more advanced settings. But again, go into the theater profile, boost the brightness a little bit, boost the contrast. I up the sharpness just a touch and then I go down into the advanced settings and I play with the motion. I put the motion on smooth. I turn pretty much all of the noise reduction and all the digital automation stuff. I either have it on low or off. I find that just interrupts the image a little bit. So keep it on low, turn it off if you like. On low there's not too much, but it does have a little bit of processing in the background, which can be helpful. And then when you go down into the calibration settings, I turn the color temperature. It By default it's into warm, which looks a little too yellow for my liking, so I change that into standard, which brings everything down into a hue that I, think's a lot more, that I think looks more natural. And then I'm going into the individual colors and tweaking them a little bit. The reds are very, very bright, uh, vibrant, so I go in and I turn those down a little bit just to reduce some of the effect because I find it really in your face. So I turn the reds down. I play with the flesh tone a little bit. The blues and the other colors you can manipulate just a little bit as you see here in my settings, but the biggest one is definitely the reds. Turn the reds down and get that flesh tone dialed in and that's still the one that I think the Hisense PX2 Pro struggles with most. Depending on what you're watching, skin tones can look a little artificial. They might have little orangey hues, sometimes red, sometimes green. Um, and they're very faint. I'm kind of looking for it and I guess I've sort of become accustomed to looking for that detail. But I find the flesh tones are something that Hisense could improve. And again, I still believe if you were to up the brightness of the projector, you don't necessarily need the brightness to run at that maximum capacity, but it'll affect all of the colors within your range and improve contrast and hopefully improve color accuracy within that. So again, if they were to make a PX3 Pro, their motion is much better, their overall brightness is way better and I still think they could just up it a little bit, maybe get to 28 or 3,000 lumens and just play with that motion enhancing to have really buttery smooth uh, motion when I'm watching sports or fast paced action movies. But overall, there is definitely a noticeable difference compared to last year's PX1 Pro. And some of the most obvious ways to notice it is watching any kind of content with the lights on. So as you can see, I have a few clips with the lights off and with the lights on. Obviously, it's not as good as with the lights off, let's be real, but it's far, far better than last year's and it looks really good. For anyone that's used to looking at a standard projector, one that's mounted at the back of the room, you're probably familiar with it not being watchable with the lights on. This is very, very watchable, and you can imagine in the right setting where you can control your lighting, imagine you have a room that you can completely manipulate the lighting, you could have some lights on in certain areas and get a very, very good contrasty, punchy image from this projector. They've definitely improved the performance with the lights on and that is reflected in the video. Obviously, again, you still get the best, best performance with the lights off, but it's very, very good with some lights on and it's very, very watchable. I bring people over and they're absolutely impressed with, first of all, the sheer size of it, but also the image performance and if you're watching any kind of 4K movie, the clips are really, really clean, super sharp, very color accurate and they just look really, really good. This leads me into the Dolby Vision content. When you're watching stuff in Dolby Vision, again, you have some different picture profiles that you can choose from. In my opinion, the best option is the Dolby Vision custom profile. You'll have to go in and manipulate a couple of settings again. Make sure that you change these settings to all sources as well because you can go into the settings menu and change the settings for specific sources. For me, I find my settings that I like for standard content and I find my settings that I like for Dolby Vision and I have those set to all sources no matter what I'm watching. For Dolby Vision, the best option in my opinion is the custom profile. Again, it looks the most accurate from right out of the box. Make sure that the motion again is set to smooth. Make sure that your color temperature is set to standard and then you can go in and manipulate some of the individual colors again. For the most part, I didn't play with this too, too much. I still think the flesh tones, the skin tones are something that can be worked on, but this is definitely the best picture profile in my opinion for watching Dolby uh, Vision content. You can see with Netflix on, content looks great. The movie theater experience is really, really, really good. And something that is noticeably improved compared to last year is when you're watching a movie that's widescreen, you can have the black bars on the top and bottom. Last year's model, they definitely looked a little bit gray, even with the lights off. Now you'll notice that the black bars are definitely darker. There's definitely a more accurate black there with those letter boxes on the top and bottom when watching a movie. And again, this is reflective of the, of the contrast being improved thanks to overall brightness. 
In terms of sound quality, again, I said this last year, the soundbar built in is really, really good, and I'll say the same thing. In my opinion, unless you're going for a full-on surround sound system, a 7.1 or a Dolby Atmos supported system, like a full-on system, I don't think you need a soundbar. I think the soundbar built into this Hisense projector is very, very good. I don't think a standard soundbar alone will improve the audio so much that it's worth that expense. I think if you're gonna go for a full-on system, go for it, it'll obviously improve the audio performance, but the soundbar built into the Hisense PX2 Pro is good enough for a standard on its own soundbar to not necessarily be needed, in my opinion. For the gamers out there, this is a great option for gaming support. The lag is really, really low unless you're like an ultra competitive first person shooting gamer kind of person. <laughs> and at that point, again, you're probably playing on a dedicated monitor. For any standard game, this is by far very, very acceptable. The input lag is not noticeable. And for you gamers out there, it's a great option. Massive screen, punchy, contrasty image, and it's gonna perform really, really well. There are noticeable improvements over last year's model, which is a good thing, so I tip my hat to Hisense for improving the contrast, the motion smoothing, and just creating a better overall image, especially with the lights on. Again, keep boosting that contrast, keep working on that motion enhancing performance, because I think that's needed, but overall, this is, especially for the money, a very, very good option to get yourself a massive image in a dedicated home theater space. It's very, very hard to beat. I would love to compare this projector to the 4 movie. I still have yet to review that one. Or the new Vision, AWOL Vision models. That Those seem to be extremely bright and I think in the right environment. Because of that added brightness, you're really going to get a fantastic image. So that's my review on the Hisense PX2 Pro. If you guys have any questions, please leave those down below in the comment section. I always get an answer out to you. Mike McTire, All Things Sports. I'm signing off for now. Like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then, take care. Peace.